Hi everyone, we're here on this rainy afternoon talking about watersheds. And this is a perfect uh, type of weather to talk about watersheds because what happens when the rain comes down and hits the land? We'll learn all about that today in our lesson. Today we're gonna to be studying watersheds. So before we get started, I want you to take out your nature science journal and take a few minutes and write down what that word means to you watersheds. Now typically when we ask students what watersheds mean, we get a lot of different responses. Even grown-ups um, struggle with what a watershed is. And we're going to spend some time today exploring what a watershed is and how people impact watersheds. And remember, this is part one of a series of classes. Our next step is we're going to go into the watershed and we're going to explore what lives there and what types of things impact watersheds in our next lesson. But today is all about learning about what a watershed is, which is one of our first questions. What is a watershed? Our second investigative question is how do people impact a watershed? I have the whole world in my hand. That's right, here's my earth globe. Um, I want you to take a look at this and tell me what you notice. Do you see those blue areas? Is there more blue on the earth than there is green and brown? There is for sure. There's a lot of water on earth. And think about all of the things that you use water for every day. We use water to brush our teeth, to take a shower, to drink, but also the food that I eat needs water. And when I want to buy something like a book or um, a new pair of shoes, it takes water to be able to make all of those materials. And it takes water to help process um, all of those things and transport all of those things. And it takes water um, for me to water my lawn and uh, do all of my daily activities. So water is really important to all of us. And we're going to talk a little bit more today about waters and watersheds. So the solar globe, this actually represents, be ready for this, 326 million trillion gallons of water. So think about that gallon of, of milk that you get at the store sometimes. 326 million trillion gallons of water on earth. Sounds like a lot of water, right? And it is, but we're gonna think about how much we can actually use of that water. And to do so, we're gonna create another little mathematical model here. I have my water bottle, which is a thousand milliliters. So let's say, this thousand milliliters represents that 326 million trillion gallons of water. So out of a thousand milliliters, we're gonna pull only 30 milliliters. Now I don't have a graduated cylinder with me at home, so I found this medicine dropper. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this is about 30 milliliters of water. I dyed it blue so it would be easier to see. So this is the rest of the water that's on earth. There's a little problem with that. We can't use it, you know why? Don't waste salt. Um, it's salty, that's right. This is all of the water that is in the oceans. We can't use it for our daily lives. We can't use it for processing things or making things or watering our crops. It's too salty. Um, so we are left with this 30 milliliters of fresh water. Now, out of those 30 milliliters, 80% is, you guessed it, frozen and the North Pole and the South Pole. So I don't remember, I don't have all of my measuring tools, so we're gonna make an estimate and we're gonna pour off about 30%, which is actually frozen. There you go. So let's say that is about six milliliters that we are left with, six milliliters. And I lost my, one second. 
got my trusty medicine dropper here. Out of that six milliliters, we have water that is both on the surface and underground groundwater. So surface water is everything you, that you can see. It's the oceans and the lakes and the streams and the rivers, but the underneath water is called groundwater and there's water actually underneath. So if you were to dig deep enough, you would find pockets of water underground. Sometimes we use groundwater, but if we're gonna use groundwater, say for example, drinking water, we have to be able to use machines to pull it up out of the water. So we need to take energy. So out of this, all of this water, are you ready for this? How much do you think is available for us on the surface to easily use. I'll give you a second to think about that. Tell me what your prediction is. If you guess not a lot, you're right. It's actually one single drop. That's right, one single drop, which represents 0.0003% of all the water in the world is what is available to us for drinking and brushing our teeth and showering, growing our food, making materials, transporting things. That's all we got. All right, so now that we've learned a little bit about water and where water comes from, I thought I would show you this really cool watershed model. This is from, I'm actually gonna turn this around so you can see, that makes a little bit more sense. So uh, this is a watershed model. This is made by a company called Enviroscape and some of you may have seen this before. Maybe we brought this to your school from Riverbend. And what this model does is it allows us to look at a watershed and play out a couple of different situations and how um, what we do on the land impacts the water. Now, remember we talked about surface water. We see lots of surface water on this model. We see this river here or a stream. We see another river or stream. And then we can see that this dumps into a bigger body of water. That might be an ocean or a bay, depending on where you live, or it could be a bigger river, um, depending on where you live. And then if I lift up the top here, I can see underneath is what would be the groundwater. So remember we talked about um, water that um, is underneath the ground that we have to pump up. And so um, that could also be represented from below. But on this model, we're gonna talk really just about surface water. So we have a lot of things going on here in this model. We've got a farm over here. See the tractor, little barn. It looks a little bit like Riverbend. Um, and we have what looks like a neighborhood, pretty big houses in that neighborhood. Um, and it looks like maybe these are some newer houses because um, the land is brown here. And so it looks like maybe, um, you know, they've just built that house and the grass hasn't grown up yet. We also have what looks like a little mountain. Um, maybe we've got some walking trails up here where people are walking. Looks like we've got a big building. This could be a factory or maybe it could be a big apartment building in a city. Um, it's hard to tell, but we can use our imagination. And then we've got some roads where cars would be driving and um, we've got some sidewalks and pathways. So it looks like we have lots of different surfaces here. We've got natural surfaces and we've got man-made surfaces. So one of the things I did is um, I did put a little bit of cinnamon. It smells really good in here. It smells like cinnamon on um, top of this piece here and on top of the farm. Because whenever we remove vegetation from the land, we remove that green stuff, um, it makes it easier for soil and sediment to um, to run off of the areas where they are so um, and into the water. So that cinnamon represents the soil and the sediment that's there. Some of the other things that we can see are um, looking at what is going on. And I have some really fun tools that we're gonna look at. We've got uh, some sprinkles, we've got red sprinkles and we've got blue sprinkles and we even have chocolate sprinkles. Those are gonna represent different things in our model. So let's think about what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. So we talked about taking away all of the trees and the plants that can make it easier for soil to run off. But when we farm and when we um, fertilize our lawns, we use 
um, chemicals, different chemicals. We use pesticides and we use fertilizer. So we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of that on the areas where we would be treating lawns. It's like another area where we're treating grass and lawns. The farm we're going to be treating a little bit, using a little bit of fertilizer. And we don't just use fertilizer, we also use pesticides, and that's going to be the red stuff. And the pesticides do things, pesticides and weed control, things that stop things from growing there. I did, I should say the fertilizer has um, nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus in there that are good in small amounts, in certain amounts, um, but when overused, they can get into the water um, in greater concentrations, which can be a problem. And so we've got that. The other thing I noticed is when we have a farm, we often have animals that live on that farm and those animals produce waste. So poop, right? Maybe the animals live over here near the barn, not necessarily on the field. And then also here in this suburban neighborhood, we probably have some dogs and things that are walking around that produce waste. Maybe over here on the trail too, we've got some dogs that are producing waste. Um, we may have some emissions, um, particulates that are coming into the air from this factory um, or this high rise here. And then maybe that falls down to the earth again. And then um, another thing that um, we didn't even talk about was the road. So we may have some oils on the road from the cars that are dripping on the road. We may have some salt in the winter that does that as well. Um, I don't necessarily have oil with me, so maybe I'll just put a little bit of red in here too, just to represent that oil. Um, now, oil would be a different consistency. It would be, um, you would see sort of those bubbles on the surface of the water. So all of this stuff is happening. I don't see a lot in the water right now, um, but now we're gonna look at um, what happens when the rain comes. Um, precipitation, like rain or snow, impacts everything that's happening on the land. So. Got a spray bottle here, and we are going to make it rain. So we've got just some light rain shower going over the whole ecosystem. And we can see what's happening here. So first of all, I see everything is getting really wet, right? So all of my chemicals, all of my sediment is getting really kind of wet. And some of it is probably soaking in, um, but some of it, starts to liquefy and run off into the water. And then if we have a really heavy rainstorm, let's change my setting here, we can see that it runs off even faster. Do you see that? Going off the road, and once it hits the road, it runs off pretty quickly because that road surface is slick and there's not much holding those um, sediments and chemicals where they are. And you see, we also have, remember, some of that cinnamon, which represents the soil that is running off there. Now we can see all of that stuff is starting to run off into the bigger waterway. Cut waste. So not all of it is running off into the waterway, but a lot of it is. A lot of it, see it sitting on the road surface there? It's kind of pooling up and sitting into the road surface. So we can see if this is our watershed model, this is all of the land area that um, flows into these waterways. So when it rains, uh, every place the rain touches this land flows into these water systems. So these would be part of the water watershed. And um, we can see how over time, all of our impacts kind of come together and have a greater impact on the, on the water. So you can see sort of that goopiness right there, that brown water doesn't look very clean, does it? And then if you look at our groundwater, it's looking very red um, right now. So, um, so that just gives you sort of an example and a model, and you can try this at home. You may not have a watershed model, but you might have Legos, you might have um, a plastic tablecloth that you want to kind of try out, make some hills and valleys, um, get yourself a spray bottle and some sprinkles and see what you can come up with. And what we're going to do next, now that we have seen this watershed model, is we're going to go out into a rainstorm that's happening right now outside and we're going to see what happens to the rain around my house.
Okay, so now that we saw on our watershed model where we think the water may go when it rains and where we think all of the things that are on the land go when it rains, we're gonna take a real live tour of what happens when it rains in my neighborhood. Okay, so many of you have one of these at your house. Um, it is a gutter. So when the rain hits your roof, it comes all the way down, it funnels into the gutter and all the way down. And you can see where it's falling right there. And you can see where I have water that's starting to pool on certain parts of my driveway. And what that's going to do is it's gonna run down my driveway. Um, and we don't have a river quite yet, but we're gonna form a small little river here. Maybe we'll go out later and see it. And it's gonna w wind up in the street and then as we get up to my street here, we can follow my street. I have lots of dandelions on my lawn right now and we'll keep on walking and we're going to see where all of that water goes. You can track this in your own neighborhood. Do you see this river kind of forming here all along the street? Do, 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 going along the river here. And there you go, winds up in the storm drain. Now, what are some of the things that you guys notice? First of all, it's really loud, but I can see all of the big pieces of litter that people had thrown down in the street are now stuck in the storm drain. And then if I look down here, there you go. I can see all of that water and where that water is gonna go is directly into the river, into the waterways. So you can see where people have accidentally left their trash on the ground and how that very easily gets swept right down into the river. Now, can we think about maybe some things that we don't see, maybe some pollution that's invisible to us and how that winds up in the waterway? Do you think it's the same process? I think it might be. So I hope you had a great time today exploring watersheds and I hope you got your answers to our two questions, which was what is a watershed and how do people impact watersheds? We're gonna explore that second question in more detail in our second watersheds lesson. The next time we're actually gonna go on a field trip, we're gonna go down to the stream and do a stream study and learn about how scientists decide if a stream or a river is healthy and what we can do to help to protect it and improve it. So what I'd like for you to do today as a follow-up is take out your nature science journals again I'd love to see you draw a picture of your watershed. You can look up your watershed address, we provide the website for that, but then draw me a picture of what that looks like. It could be your, your house, it could be your neighborhood, your school or your town, and share those with me. Send them to education at riverbendeec.org and we will share those on our website and on our social media. I would love to hear and see what you come up with. So for now, um, goodbye, and we will see you next time down at the stream.